Blog Talk Radio. Uh, you know what time it is? Time to hang out hey, with Mr. Cool. With Mr. Cool. With Mr. Cool. With Mr. Cool. From Mr. Cool. With 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 Mr. Cool. With
there was one that the Philadelphia 76ers had played the L.A. Lakers um, when Allen Iverson uh, was was getting after it, and they played the Lakers that that year. And um, matter of fact, Nike they did a Nike freestyle campaign. They started their first one, um, and I believe in February, the All Star Weekend, and then they they grew a following and, got, and um, you know got a pretty good response. And they decided to go back and. Um, make a bigger campaign and, and, and a bigger commercial with solo commercials attached to it for the NBA Finals. And uh, that's when I was introduced. When I got started in 2001, I was just, you know, graduated high school, trying to figure out where, where I was going to be, want to play basketball, or, um, you know, figure out different schools to play. And um, uh, a buddy of mine called, he was signed with AM1 at the time, uh, main event, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, he was like, well, you know, uh, the Nike's doing the spot. You know, a lot of our guys are with and one, but they're looking for the ball handler, somebody who could, you know, just dribble and do things nobody's seen before. And, you know, I've been playing and I've never seen nobody do the stuff you do, man. Just just go to this audition. And I'm like, man, I'm, you know, I'm working at a sneaker store, 18 year old kid. And sure enough, I, I took the day off work and went to, uh, went to an open casting call where, you know, street ball legends and, and NBA players are all in there trying to trying to make their 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 play in this particular campaign that I just had a buzz already before it even started that it was going to go places. It had you know Paul Hunter as a director and Savion Glover was choreographing, choreographing it. Um, African Bombada was behind it with the music. So um, wow. yeah, it was it was huge before I even got started. But I, again, I don't even know if I'm just trying to buzz, and I didn't really know my rights for my best. I was the only kid from really New Jersey. You know, um, auditioning everybody else was like, you know, street balls, you know, Rucker Park legends that I grew up watching. You know, I, nobody knew who I was. I was, you know, pretty much the only white kid in this audition. And they're like, you know, who's who this kid? Who, you know, and, and, and I went to my, my my father. I was the last one to audition in this, in this uh, gymnasium in the city. And mm-hmm. um, I was kind of glad I was the last one because, you know, it kind of takes the jitters away when, you know, the gym's starting to clear out and uh, it's down to maybe three or four people as opposed to a gym full of great basketball talent of two, three hundred, and you have to sit in front of a camera and just dribble. You know, just not recognize it, especially for any 18-year-old kid. So oh. um, they gave everybody about 30 seconds on, on a camera and then they just went to the next one and the next one. And here I am. I'm the very last one in this building. They said, all right, it's your time. To stand in front of the camera, there was like a uh, a chair, maybe 15 feet away from the camera. So move the chair aside, and just I uh, will tell you when to go. They told me when to go. They played like a Jay Z track in the background, um, just to keep you know keep you in momentum. And and I just kept dribbling, kept doing my tricks and doing stuff that pretty much I, I thought I was kind of being creative and doing things that hasn't been seen before. Um, and before you know it, man. Uh, one fall call led to another, and the room filled back up, and they just said, keep going. And I ended up being there for about maybe 15, 20 minutes. Um, wow. And Kiwi Kirkland, actually, Streetball Legend, walked up to my dad and uh, shook his hand. I was like, man, I don't know where your son is from. I don't know where you guys are from. That's the story that I've never seen you guys before, but I've never seen in all my years of playing basketball anybody handle that rock like your, like, like your son. And that's huge, man, coming from somebody – you know, who, who ran the streets as, as, a, as one of the, you know, the top New York City hustlers right, in the 70s right. and pulling out of a Cadillac, you know, with, with, with two hot women in a, in a pink fur coat and dropping 55 at halftime and up the park and turning down NBA contracts because he said he made more money on the street. So you get, you know, you get the, the, the head nod and the respect from, from a legend like that, man. You know you're on the right track, so. It was, right. it was definitely a moment I would never forget. Now, did you have the nickname Tricks before you actually came out there um, to audition? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. They, matter of fact, my nickname before that, they, everybody called me White Iverson. I, I, I kind of, you know, high school, so I, I had um, endless, endless hours trying to master the same crossover Iverson had. And that was kind of my play I was inspired by growing up. And actually later on, you know, I uh, Bubba Chuck actually became a real personal friend and like a mentor to me. Um, mm-hmm. But White Iverson was my nickname until I started going to Nike stuff and being, being a little bit more, I, I guess, known for 
dribbling and the skill set. And then, um, you know, around my neighborhood, everybody's going to start to me tricks. There's more for me to just call me tricks. But that kind of sick with me, man. I mean, um, yeah, even even business owners, and I'm in meetings and calling tricks. And said it, just, it just flows. Tricks sounds a lot easier than you say in Lewis or Louis sometimes. So it became a nickname. <laughs> was for all sports owners. So um, it kind of sick with me for about 15, 20 years now. Okay, so were you trying to um, master that crossover? You talking about the crossover like from ninety nine two thousand, the one where he did yeah, when he that, actually that, that killer crossover, oh, okay. that Allen Iverson yes, crossing over Michael Jordan, that yeah, uh, you know, the can get low, the you know the 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 answer Allen Iverson crossover left to right. So that's kind of yeah. I, I got really close and kind of mastering that that same play. And that was became became my nickname all through all through high school up until trick. Okay. Well, I got one more question about basketball for you. Um, sure. If somebody gave you the rock Let's today, can you? Oh, no matter. Hey, what's up? Okay. <laughs> so, if somebody gave you the rock right now, do you feel that you can actually do that crossover still just as smooth as 17 years ago? Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, even if I'm not playing, right. I'm still even in my mind. I'd be in a grocery store now, and my fiance <laughs> looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Um, you know, <laughs> hesitating, spin moving, and, and and she's like, you know, look, you look, you look, you know. Yeah. Either they okay. recognize you for sure, or they just think you're crazy. But either or, you know, you, I get lost in my own space sometimes. I'm in my house trying to try to cross my door over, spin moving. It's just something like, from ball is life, man. I don't care wherever you are. Um, it's just a love and a passion. I feel like that's my getaway, even on set. Oh, I mean, that's just something that I kind of gravitate to for more, like, mm-hmm. it relaxes me. Nice. Nice. Now, we heard about your basketball side. Now, um, like I said, legend, you've done a lot um, since the age of 18. You was practicing before that. Um, we will talk about the Nike endorsement deal later on. But as um, far as it goes for the acting side, when did you first realize that you wanted to become an actor? Well, that's a good question. Actually, during my, 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 my time with Nike and doing the Nike Freak Out commercial, I also shot like maybe uh, – 14 other campaigns um, with Nike. Uh, part of my endorsement deal and uh, some Gatorade spots. I, I shot a, a commercial with Mountain Dew directed by Spike Lee. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I just kind of started to grow a passion like, man, entertaining in front of a camera. So I wanted to take it a little bit more seriously outside of your sports. And, you know, I put the ball down for a while in 2006, 2007. I really started concentrating on, on just being an actor. I didn't want to be a basketball player that could, that can, that can, that can act. I just wanted to be the actor, you know, being a, a respectable actor in my own craft. And like anything else that, you know, I do, I kind of get obsessed at. And I just wanted to be, you know, be amongst one of the one of the, the greats or, or have at least, you know, be respected as a, uh, as a legitimate actor. So um, right. 2007, I had the first opportunity with Neil Jordan and the Brave One, with uh, Jody Foster, Terrence Howard, and I played over playing the lead villain um, my first first major picture, man, and it was, uh, uh, it was you know, almost a century after that. He was number one in the box office for three weeks in a row, and, yep. and it was great. It was great. So I was definitely blessed to have my first project be such a great one and not like an independent film. So, And I still didn't know what was going on. I was still like had a, had a basketball mentality, but, get, you know, a, a, raw, a raw talent in terms of, you know, performing and acting, and um, decided I was going to try to pursue this. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Nice. Now, when you actually started, and I tell anybody um, uh, in the past six seasons that say they started at a young age, you know, and this is my personal belief, Lewis, that if you have that feeling or you had a desire at a young age and you know you really want to do it, it's going to stick inside of you. And even I don't care if you're 8, 18, 38, or 88 years old. You can't actually get out there and do it. If that if it's actually inside your heart, it's so pumping through your blood, it, you will end up doing it at the end. It could be for a professional or recreation. I don't care if it's acting. I don't care if it's playing sports. I don't care if it's being a plumber. You, If it's in you, it's something that you're going to do. So I'm glad you stuck with it all the way through, from basketball to acting all the way up. So I want to say thank you yeah, for that. Absolutely. I, I, absolutely. I mean, anything you have a passion to think about, it. it's not something where you're just going to clock in and clock out. When you have a passion, it becomes it becomes an obsession. So if you mm-hmm. love something, you become obsessed with it, right? I don't know anybody right. who's talented and loves something but is not obsessed and doesn't think about it all day long, whether it's music, whether it's, you know, 
to the next host job, whether you're a, whether you're a, a medical practitioner, when you're obsessed and you love something, it, it's just it's all you do is all you think of. Um, so it's That's easy true. to try to, to, to just outdo yourself or be better every single day. I mean, um, you know, I, I got a chance to, to, to meet Colby a couple times and, and a couple of good friends of mine that actually used to, you know, that know Colby really well, like the Paul Mulberry is a good brother of mine, and, 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 and he used to tell me stories about Colby all the time, how obsessed he is. And even when he's not on the court, it's all he's doing is talking about basketball. Like, you know, and oh, wow. the reason why is, you know, Kobe Bryant. It's just not too many of those that come around. That's true. That's very true. Now, inside of your acting career, did you uh, what type of obstacles did you have to go through, you know, to get to the success that you have today? Oh man, I, the, the, the the one that sticks out the most. That I get questions all the time. No, this is tattoos hanging you from getting rolls. Well, you know, when it's when you're new in any industry and you got tattoos, they don't expect more uh, much of you. They expect you to just probably be some yes. background actor, and they don't expect you probably even speak right. So, you know, you're not, they don't really view you. At least it was more, more capital 10, 10 years ago, you know, trying to break in. Now it's a little bit different. Times change. Three, four years, it, it, you know, tattoos become a little bit more, you know, more prominent and a lot more, the visibility is, is a lot greater, especially after all these reality shows, et cetera. But people didn't know mm-hmm. that. They, they know it's some, sometimes they, they kind of think, well, will it hinder you? I, and that's my answer to, to them is, you know, it's just, if you're good enough in anything you do, you know, nothing will hinder you. You know, your work will speak for itself. You know, that's why it's called Hollywood, and, and they have things that's called makeup to cover things up. So if you go in these rooms and, 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 and lay your foot down and do your work, the directors will see it, the producers will see it, and more importantly, they'll, they'll gravitate to your energy. And maybe something yeah. that you think might be a negative, like having maybe tattoos or, you know, being somebody who looks Hispanic, you can't get lead. Maybe that might be beneficial for you because now you're putting in the work and the delivery, and they might be like, you know what? Well, now with that delivery he's got, maybe it might be, you know, um, uh, intriguing to add a tattoo or be ethnic and still deliver like that. So I, I you know, right. um, I have a, I have a tattoo. Definitely was probably something where I heard about it the most, and mm-hmm. in the beginning probably was probably my biggest hurdle. But after a while, man, I I, I think it's it's, it's past that now. I mean, I mean, think about it. I tell people all the time, Johnny Depp probably got more tattoos than I do. But Johnny Depp put his work in, you know. So, right. you know, I mean, I, 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 for anybody else, I don't think they should be discouraged if they have tattoos or piercings. I mean, this is a new age. We're in 2017, and 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 Hollywood, like every other industry, is evolving. That's true, and that's what I'm glad about that it is evolving because um, back in the early 2000s, I can even take it back to the 90s. Um, I'm an 80s baby, so I was born in 1980. But you know when the um, when the tattoos start getting more visible, I think Hollywood directors and producers, and not just Hollywood, um, even in the NY and down in Georgia, it, they were kind of scared. They saw it, they saw the body art, and it was like, whoa, we can't put him on um, sitcom television. We can't put him on family movies. But they never get a chance to judge your personality. They go off of your looks. And that's what I'm glad now more people are showing up with tattoos because now other people are getting a chance now. And they're trying to see what your skill is compared to your look. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, look at, look at our, arguably Hollywood's biggest names now have tattoos stronger mm-hmm. than an ox like Dwayne Johnson. But, you know, you, yep. you're, you're put in a circuit where you're likable amongst all yet you have a presence to you that that kind of looks a lot different. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the way it's going. And it's good. It's good. It shows that, you know, just because somebody got tattoos or has a shaved head or has a goatee doesn't make them violent. I mean. Exactly. It doesn't. Exactly. You're right about that. Now, in the movie industry right now, do you have any mentors that's actually guiding you through your career right now? Um. Yes, actually. Actually, um, I worked. I had the opportunity last year to work with a with, with a, a, a fabulous actor, John Travolta, Chris Maloney, Rebecca De Mornay, Ooh. and um, I am Rask, and um, I was one of the supporting stars in that, and uh, I grew a, a strong relationship with John Travolta. He's a family friend of mine, and and, and nice. probably you know my personal mentor. 
um, in this industry and, and kind of guide me through things that need to be done. And uh, fast forward leading into this upcoming movie I have coming out, especially first quarter of 2017, directed by mm-hmm. Kevin Conley, the life and death of John Gotti, where he plays John Gotti. Um, he, he, uh, Kelly Preston's playing uh, Victoria, is John Gotti's um, actual wife. So he's actually, he has his real wife on set, and his daughter was working there. So he has an intimate relationship to this movie because he's been working on it for try, like seven years to try to get it done. Um, and he called me and, and, and wanted me to be a part of it. And um, I, I told him, listen, I want you to kind of, you know, I'll, I'll let you navigate on what position and opportunity you think would be best suited for me. And, he handpicked the role for me, and I took it. I took it. I told him whatever he thinks okay. he wants me to play in his movie, I'll be more than glad to. And he's like, you know what? I see a different guy. Would... You know, yeah, you're you're like the new Hollywood bad guy and villain, but I want to see you. I think you, you know you definitely pull it off because you have a a good charismatic ability to you. And and he said, you know what? I I see you being this medical practitioner. So I went from being even the, the rugged of the rugged in the triple nine tattooed MS-13 from, from from neck down to all of a sudden my tattoos are clean, shaved, clean cut, mm-hmm. um, you know, as a medical doctor. So, you know, I thank, nice. him, I thank him for that. And he's been he's been a, a positive uh, inspiration in the mental. Nice. Big shout outs to John Travolta. If you're listening right now, Big shout outs to you. Um, Lewis, make sure I make sure you tell him I said what's up next time you talk to him. Um Will do. big going down with John. Big shout outs to you. You're doing big things in the movie industry still. Continue to do what you do. Yes. Now thank you so much. Yes, sir. Now Lewis, kickboxer. Kickboxer Vengeance. This is a movie that um I believe that's gonna do great things and have already. Um, can you give people the insight of that movie, of what you're, I mean, more insight of that movie or what you're doing in that movie? Right. So now um, I'm playing a character who's who's a, a, a gritty street hustler, gambler, just about making money, however boy possible, working side by side with Gina Carano's character. And we're, you know, we're bookies on a side bet of all fights that really goes down. It's authentic. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, things that, that happen in different cities. And, you know, being on set with, you know, the Dave Batista, the Jean-Claude Van Damme, and all these great, you know, uh, MMA and, and, and martial arts fighters and champions in their own right is um, it, it's amazing to watch how, how dedicated and disciplined they are in their craft um, mm-hmm. as, a, as an athlete and a fighter and translating that and watching them on set day in and day out put the same amount of effort and work and um, how competitive they actually are. So it was um, it was amazing to see. I was so happy to be a part of it, and, and I was a huge fan of the, the, the original kickboxers when we grew up watching yeah. it, you know, and when, it, when it, yeah. was, it was in the 90s. And it was my second time working with Jean-Claude Van Damme. I worked with him once in 2012 uh, in an independent film called Dragonine with Kung mm-hmm. Lee, um, and also it was a debut of my homeboy, Jason Mitchell, who's, who's the Easy E now. So that was his first little debut. <laughs> and uh, another another personal friend of mine as well, uh, before mm-hmm. he even got started. And those are the days where he had to leave set and go work back at uh, at the Oyster Bar in Metairie, Louisiana, man. So and it's fun to see him and, and his little career flourish as well, man. So um, it was a blessing. It was a blessing. It was a blessing. And, 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 and how dynamic that set was, man. And I think out of all the sets I ever worked on, I never seen so many in shape actors. <laughs> and that and that craft service table had nothing but like healthy protein options and amino amino acid drinks, mm-hmm. and shots, and you know these are all competitors that they take care of their 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 body just as much as they're working on the craft. So it was, it was interesting to to be involved in. Nice, nice. Big shout out to Jean Claude Van Damme. Also, you've been doing your thing for the longest, and you're continuing to do it. Keep doing what you do. Also, um, you're giving people like Lewis a chance to get out there to do his thing and look at him. I mean, he's building his resume like never before. Um, big shout out to Lionsgate, um, the life and death of John Gotti. Big shout out to that. Also, I mean, you're doing a lot, Lewis, and I don't see yourself slowing down anytime soon. I don't even think to be truthful. Oh. I want how do you sleep? Because you're yeah. so busy and on set, and with the rock in your hand, I mean, it's it's crazy. 
It's crazy. Right, I yes. appreciate that. Yes, sir. Now, are there any other projects that you would like to speak about um, that you're working on right now that you would like to let the world know about? Yeah, well, you know, I, like, like I said, I got the, the Life and Death of John Godley coming out first quarter. Um, um, uh, independent movie I did, I really like what uh, directed by Jim Jarmusch and um, um, Adam Driver called Patterson about a, uh, a poet, you know, real event about a poet um, who uh, grew up in Patterson, New Jersey, and he used his name Patterson. So I, I did a project that's out now. It's been doing really good on the, uh, on the film festival circuit. Um, so you can check that out now. And then, you know, if, if anybody's home and wants to just catch up with some of the previous projects I've done, they probably wouldn't even know how to connect the dots, man. I mean, you know, American mm-hmm. Hero with Stephen Dorff and Eddie Griffin and American Heist with Akon, Hayden Christensen, Adrian Brody, um, uh, Triple Nine, if you haven't seen that. Um, yes. You know, because of the MS-13 and well, Casey Affleck just won the Golden Globe. Big shout out to mm-hmm. Casey for that one. Um, and I Am Rat. So check out I Am Rat. I want people to understand and, and see that film. It's a really good film. And that's kind of where uh, we kind of connected and grew a relationship with John Travolta. It's a really good case. Um, and um, yeah, man, if, if anybody wants to continue on following me, and all, all, you know, I'm on all social media platforms at Lewis Tricks. That's L U I S T R I K Z. And I'm, I'm, I'm here. I try to get it to all my DMs and answer as many people as I possibly can on how to break through the industry and different questions they have about their tattoos or, or, or you know, different type of roles, etc. So uh, it takes me a while, but between me and my publicity team, we try to get, get to everybody. <laughs> That's what's up. For the people that are just tuning in live right now worldwide, give it to them one more time, Lewis. Let them know how they can find you on social media. One more time. Yeah, hey, man, so uh, I'm, I'm on Instagram at Lewis Tricks. That's L-U-I-S-T-R-I-K-Z. I'm on Twitter at Lewis Tricks. Same thing, L U I S T R I K Z. Um, Snapchat, the same thing, L U I S T R I K Z, or LewisTricks.com. So, pretty much between all the all the platforms, you can reach me. Uh, I'm heavier on the gram, so I'm usually always on Instagram. Um, you can catch me there, and you know, if anybody has any questions, and you know, I'm 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 as real as it gets, man. I try to get I just try to get around to everybody. So, if you're trying to break into Hollywood, or question about sports or how to mend it to, or what's going on next, feel free to hit me up. Nice. Everybody listening worldwide right now, you can't get it confused. Lewis Tricks, go find him on Instagram, follow him on social media, period. Catch up with the latest and greatest. Keep up with him. You'll see what he's doing through his career, from the movies, from handling the rock. And when I say by the rock, people, if you don't know what that means, I'm talking about basketball, I'm not talking about drugs. Also, guys, I'm (laughs) telling you, if you have any questions, about basketball, if you have any questions about getting into the industry, if you have any questions about tattoos, if you have any questions about anything, hit him up. His team is going to make sure that they tell him who's hitting him up, and he will respond eventually. So make sure you follow him on social media. Yes, make sure you do that. Um, Lewis, I know you're a busy man, so I'm not going to hold you up much longer, but um, what is your ultimate goal as an actor? Um. I guess my ultimate goal as an actor, and it's a work of practice, man. I mean, it's um, is is drawing and growing the 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 ability to have producers and studios believe that you can actually hold and fulfill your end of the bargain, starring in your own picture, man. So um, anybody could be like, okay, I'm gonna star in a movie, and you can, but when you actually have a team behind you that that believe that you can you can roll out three or four pictures and and you, you know different type of genres. That's what that's what my ultimate goal is. And then and then from there, eventually later on, take my own canvas and direct. But that's a, that's a little far ahead. Nice, nice. I, it, don't worry, it's coming. It's definitely coming. <laughs> now, um, and like I said, I know you're a busy man. So final question for you: What yeah. advice would you give any male or female? that wants to become an actor or an actress in the industry, if they hit you up right now on social media and they ask you that question, what would you tell them? Um, don't be desperate and be patient. And when I mean don't be desperate, uh, there's a lot of different scams. People trying to tell you how to pay to try to be in an agency or pay me. Uh, I can try to, you know, send your pictures out here and there. Talent's going to find talent. And if you're good enough, you're going to get there. 
So be patient. I mean, it's something that, that I, I still challenge myself with, but it's the best advice I could give somebody. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, but, you know, start off start off with getting the right pictures done and, uh, uh, you know, take, take the right steps. If you're, if you're a woman, don't, don't be intrigued with somebody trying to, you know, lower your in because of, of how you look. Let them appreciate you for your craft. And if, if you're a guy, don't sell yourself short thinking because, you know what, you got too many muscles, you're just going to be the background guy. Don't, don't settle. Don't settle. Know your worth, know your value. And sometimes it's worth you taking a step back and saying you're not going to do something, even if it's paying a little bit, to keep your boundaries and, and keep your stock high and knowing that, you know what, that you know you're better than. Um, because by doing that sometimes, they, they, you get put in a, in a box and then it's, it, that's even harder to jump out of, you know, and, uh, um, you know, just stand for what you believe in. Nice. But this does not nice. happen overnight. You know, if, if you're looking for an overnight success, you're better off going to your local corner store, Bodega, man, and get a dollar scratch off <laughs> and get that, that jackpot. But this ain't that type of industry. <laughs> nice. That's so true. Definitely so true. Lewis, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. Um, I would love to have you back on in the future. Yes. Absolutely. All right, guys. Everybody. Yes, sir. Everybody, make sure you do go check them out on social media. Um, follow them on social media. Keep up with them. Check out Lionsgate, The Life and Death of John Gotti. Check out Kickboxer Vengeance. Check them out everywhere you can. Oh, and go look for it. It's probably on YouTube. I know it's on YouTube. Find that 2001 video of him and Nike when he's actually um, yeah. made the Nike commercial, the only non-NBA basketball player on that commercial, got endorsement deals, doing big things. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Louis DeSilva, and we'll catch him next time on The Big Scoop with Coop. Uh, you know what time it is. Time to hang out yeah. with Mr. Coop. 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 Ladies, Coop. From Mr. Kuba, from Mr. Kuba, from Mr. Kuba, hey, we're Mr. Kuba, we're Mr. Kuba, we're Mr. Kuba.